Big questions I think on investors' minds right now is, Inflation, is it transitory, as Jay Powell tells us, or could it be more troubling than that? If you look at the fixed income market, what do you look at to answer that question? Well, I think it's very hard to know what to look at. In the 60s, people looked at the Phillips curve. In the 70s, the theory of, mon of inflation was that it was monetary in all places. You looked at M M2 growth. Um, in, the, in the 90s, it was P star. There's been all different models and none of them have really worked. Um, today, we're in a we're clearly moved into a direction of uh, this this modern monetary theory. One of my favorite charts you can pull up uh, on your terminal is just just chart uh, the budget deficit versus the growth in the Fed balance sheet. It's a one for one sort of item. So if anyone thinks we're not in modern monetary policy world, uh, take a hard look at that. Um, and I think that given that it's it's going to be very difficult to know whether inflation is going to be real or transitory. But as we increase the amount of government spending going on, and as we move from the government transferring money to individuals to actually spending the money themselves, uh, I believe the price elasticities will become, will change, and you'll actually see more persistent inflation. So that's something we're focused on, is the idea that government spending does tend to be subject to more inflationary pressures. And they will also crowd out, as they do infrastructure, they're going to crowd out traditional commodities like copper, lumber, steel. So, uh, Nancy, you actually try to hedge against inflation with your IVOL ETF. Uh, give us a sense of what you look at on inflation, because in addition to what Laird said, for example, you look at money supply, and, and I mean, like M2, I think, has increased by more than 25% year over year. I mean, if you, if you look at the data and you look at what's happening in reality between the Fed having an average inflation target between uh, having fiscal spending, between having the Fed not even thinking about thinking about raising rates, um, and uh, a blue wave right now, and relative to the rest of the world, really exporting inflation now from emerging market companies and uh, countries, I, I don't know why people wouldn't have uh, inflation in their portfolio. To me, it's sort of like, why would you, why would you take a risk and take a bet? To me, um, inflation is actually a bigger risk to investors than a recession, because if you think about what, you know, not, not, not healthy normal inflation, but if we had runaway inflation, that would uh, decrease our purchasing power, right? Um, the cost of drugs, the cost of housing, the cost of travel, especially if we have a weaker dollar. Um, to me, I don't see why people are thinking or overthinking it, I think you should just have a diversified portfolio. And just because we haven't had runaway inflation for many years, doesn't mean we're not going to have it in the future. Uh, so, so Laird, assuming for a moment that there is a significant risk, one that an investor needs to take into account of inflation, what do you do? I mean, when I think of fixed income, you're an expert, I'm not. But I think uh, inflation is not necessarily good for bond values. Uh, yeah, we I, we would love to argue our asset class here. We would always love to argue it, but I think our fiduciary responsibility says that you know looking for high returns from fixed income in this environment is probably you know the, there will be areas of the fixed income markets that can generate high returns, but in general, uh, I think you have to be concerned that rates could go higher here before the Fed kind of wakes up and goes from thinking about thinking about to thinking about. Uh, at some point actually taking action. Um, if you're going to protect yourself, I think you look to, you know, what is the government going to crowd out? Where are the price elasticities uh, going to become um, uh, very sensitive? Um, and I think you look at copper and I think you look at some of the industrial metals and I think you look at lumber and you look at where the housing market is today. And, and you know, there's a story this morning that supply in Greenwich is down 44% uh, for houses. Um, there's going to be building in the private sector. There's going to be building in the public sector. Um, and I think you position yourself uh, to benefit from that. Uh, so, so Nancy, from your point of view, because this is really what you do, uh, how do you hedge for inflation? You have your IVOL ETF. That's one alternative, I assume. What do you recommend in terms of hedging for the possibility of inflation? Well, I know a lot of people look at commodities, you know, as Laird was pointing out, and I know a lot of people look at some equities and some sectors in the markets. To me, um, and what we do with Eyeball, is we look at the interest rate markets. Um, that to me seems like a very simple way of saying, where do lenders lend money, right? The different levels of, of interest rates around the world, and we use the um, 
over-the-counter swaps market, which is, you know, there are lots of different rates in the U.S. dollar. Um, Fed funds is one. Uh, you know, you have LIBOR, you have treasury rates. The OTC swaps market is where global bond issuers, right? When AstraZeneca needs to raise money or when Sony needs to raise money or any um, issuer around the world, any corporate, they hedge their uh, bond risk in the rates market.